Thanks a lot, Chris. Unlike the last time these teams met, there were stops down the stretch. In the fourth quarter, there was only 48 combined points. The Wizards scored 48 in the fourth, <laughs> the last meeting. And Sarah, not only did the Nets find a way to close this game against the Wizards and get a win, bouncing back against Orlando's loss the other night, but... Kyrie Irving, again, showed the kind of closer he is. Didn't have a great game, but he had great moments down the stretch when the Nets needed him most. Yeah, and I think when we look at Kyrie Irving in particular, what he's done this season as a closer, you could add James Harden, of course, in there. The opportunity as well to elevate the play of their teammates, and namely pointing to Nicholas Claxton, who yeah. now is Steve Nash is starting to trust in the fourth quarter and in some of those closing minutes. But I think just the way of this team learning that it's not always going to be pretty and they always can rely on their offense in many ways but defensively and for the Wizards who were scoring with ease and they were getting it going in transition they were finding their way in the paint the Nets did a nice job of getting the timely spot stops when needed even though they weren't necessarily as effective from the offensive end and how they were scoring they understood that getting the job done in the, is the defensive end is just as critical when they found their ways to win. Now Nicholas Claxton you just mentioned closing a Again, he's a plus six off the bench in this game. The plus minus has been great for Claxton in his 11 games. Sarah, what do you think about Claxton getting more regular minutes with the starters, whether or not he's starting or not, but we see him on the floor with the starters at the end of games? James Harden and Kyrie Irving make the game easier for everyone, but I guarantee you they appreciate the activity and the availability that Nicholas Claxton brings around the rim off those pick-and-roll plays. What he does defensively, guarding one through five, and how well he works in this switching scheme, the rebounding, the blocking, and then running the floor. And it's just that energy, the bounce that the Nets needed. And we, in particular, saw that when the Nets got into an early hole. He was part of that group making an impact. But I think how he plays and his impact on the game is so much has been helped by the play of others because of where he finds his spots on the floor and he's a player that's just going to continue to improve because he's just getting started all right sarah gonna give you a two for one here okay blake griffin debut impressions of that and looking ahead to what should be a really exciting trip back to back against portland and utah yeah, i think up. blake griffin we didn't know what to expect we were anxious to see how he would fit in and not so much by the numbers and i know we were all very excited about the dunk as was blake and his teammates uh, but overall just you could start to see flashes of how he's going to be able to be utilized within the course of this roster the combinations of him on the floor and how he could play that small ball five his strength his physical and I think we'll continue to see his playmaking ability, his shot making, and how his IQ translates into what this group looks like. And big trip coming up. I mean, quick to for the Nets to be on the road, come back home, and go again against a Portland team that has been playing phenomenal. Utah, of course, coming off a loss against the Wizards, but uh, best record in the league. So this is not an easy one, though I think for the Nets it'll be good to see that type of competition. Get ready to stay up late this week, fans, for Nets on Yes with back to back 10 p.m. games as we send it back to you in the studio, Chris.